This is by far the best bunker for keeping your loot safe in an offline. Just by simply placing a roof through the floor below, you can open the wall above to reveal what's inside. And the best thing is that they cost nothing to seal. This is the magical multi-TC roof bunker. But before we unravel its secrets, here's a word from our sponsor. Thank you to Hal for sponsoring this video. Be sure to claim your free 50 cents when using my code, CROW, and your free daily case to win up to $2,000 every day. They have many great games such as Jackpot, Coin Flip, and The Wheel. Their shop has every skin available to withdraw, and for a limited time, you can get a 40% bonus when depositing with crypto and gift cards. So click my link in the description, and remember, 18s and above only. As I'll demonstrate here, part of the building mechanics in Rust allow you to divide or open a wall with a triangle or regular square roof. But as you'll see now, if the wall is sealed on all sides, this is not possible. So how on earth do these bunkers work? Through multi-TC, of course. Now, I'm going to give a quick explanation of what multi-TC is. Take a look at these two seemingly identical footprints. Which one is multi-TC? If you think they're both multi-TC, then you're wrong. Just because a base has many external tool cupboards, this does not make it multi-TC. Let's take a closer look. As you can see with the first footprint, the entire shell is all connected to the main TC. In the building community, this is referred to as a single TC base, with externals connected to the wide gap foundations. It is not possible to build this kind of bunker on this base. On the second footprint, only these parts of the base are connected to the main TC. This section on the front and back are multi-TC, which creates the tiny gaps required to make this type of bunker work. Hence the name, multi-TC roof bunker. As these sections are not connected to the main TC, they must be connected to an external TC. We do this using frames that pass through the wide gap, like so. There are many tutorials on multi-TC already on YouTube, which I'll link in the description if you want to know more about it. But the basic idea is that you build out by 7 or 8 squares, depending on your desired footprint. Build back with triangles to form the shape you need. This is also known as wall stacking, but wall stacking is an old term from about five years ago, where you could literally stack walls in the game. This is more like foundation stacking, a more appropriate term coined by vice versa. Now we have the gaps necessary to build our bunkers. And if you're familiar with my designs, you'll know that I like to hide them away on the upper floors of the base. First, I'll show you how to build the simplest form of a multi-TC roof bunker. You might be tempted to cover the gap in the floor at the front by touching this triangle to the main TC part. This is not recommended, as any boxes placed on the gap will break due to stability bugs. Next, surround the triangles with walls and add ceilings. Then place a wall to seal. As the wall is not connected to the sides or the top, we can open this wall with a roof. But obviously, we want to cover these gaps to prevent raiders from accessing our loot. We do this with conditional models. As you can see, if two walls are upgraded to the same material and facing the same way, this activates a protruding edge on the corners. We use this to cover the gaps. So open the bunker and place a door frame, upgrading it to the same material as the outside wall. If they are both rotated correctly, the conditional model covers the gap. We'll put a battery in here with a door to give it more protection so raiders can't easily destroy it if you happen to leave your bunker open. On the right, build a shelf at half height to store your best loot. To cover the gap on this side, place a wall frame, upgrading it to the same material, and rotate it to activate the conditional model again. Now place the boxes in the bunker. In my experience, it's very important not to pack these bunkers with as many boxes as possible. If they come into contact with a gap below, Raiders will be able to loot them, and they can even break due to stability bugs. The same goes for the opening wall. Keep boxes well away from the roof, otherwise they might break when you open and close the bunker. You only need a few boxes to hide away your boom and some ceiling mats in case you get offlined. Now the gaps in the sides are covered, but there's still a gap in the top. 
We can seal this by attaching a square tile to the triangle ceilings of the bunker. This is easiest to do from inside the bunker. If you like, you can make the bunker self-sealing if any raiders come near it. Just place walls here and then a flame turret. You can even place the roof to open the bunker from below. An important thing to note is that you should never attach anything to this side of the bunker as it will be sealed forever, so bear that in mind in your design. Also, you should make sure the bunker is well supported. This frame should be HQM, or at least sheet as it holds up the opening wall. Place frames or walls throughout your design to ensure the bunker is as stable as possible. Next, I'll show you a different style of this bunker. First, it's important to note that you shouldn't try and be clever and cover the gaps in the floor with a frame glitched into the square tile. Any boxes placed on it will break due to stability bugs. I recommend attaching a square floor to the back wall instead of the front, so raiders can't loot the boxes from the gap underneath when blowing in from outside. Then surround the square with walls. As you can see, there are gaps on two corners of the bunker, allowing us to open it from any side. But in this tutorial, I'll show you how to build it where this wall is the entrance. To seal the gaps in the corners, build a wall frame here. Make sure that the frame and the connecting wall are facing the same way to activate the conditional model. Then do the same on this side with another wall frame. If using a different footprint, you might have to upgrade and rotate different parts to suit your base. Now the corner gaps are covered. Seal the top with a square tile. Make sure it doesn't attach to the top of the opening wall. Otherwise, the bunker will no longer open. Now, we only have two small gaps left in the top. For the back one, open the wall with a triangle roof and attach a triangle to the square. Do the same for this gap, but this time we don't need to open the wall. You can give it more stability by attaching another triangle to the frame. Check that the bunker still works by opening with the triangle roof. You can also open it by placing the roof through the floor and down below. In my earlier bunker base designs, I had a habit of using salvaged shelves to store loot on. Although quick and easy to place, this is definitely not recommended as for some unknown reason, the shelf creates stability bugs which will then break your boxes when you open or close the bunker. Instead, you should place a triangle shelf at half height through the wall for reliable loot storage. It is possible to fit a battery in the corner, but it can be quite frustrating to achieve, although it's vulnerable due to the gap here. Not a big issue in this particular design due to the sealed walls underneath, but if it makes you feel uncomfortable, I have an alternative I'll show you. Next, place the boxes like so, remembering not to pack it to the brim and to keep them away from the gap and from touching the opening roof. If you don't like the battery placement, you can build a separate battery compartment at the back. But now, this wall frame will no longer cover this gap to instead replace it with a single door frame inside. Then you can place four large boxes like so. Again, it's important not to connect anything to this side of the opening wall, otherwise you'll break the bunker. This square bunker is more stable than the three triangle one, but to make double sure, you can upgrade the supporting pieces below. I tested this bunker with shotgun traps and flame turrets to make it auto close, but unfortunately it's not possible. The shotgun traps do not break the twig roof, and the roof isn't placeable with a flame turret behind.
Lastly, I'll show you how the conditional models that cover the gaps hold up against incendiary bullets and HV rockets. As you can see from my testing, not one incendiary bullet passes through, even though you can clearly see there is a tiny pixel gap in this bunker. They don't pass through here either. The same goes for rockets. In my testing, all the boxes inside remained untouched. The only downside is if the raiders have access to the gap in the floor underneath, they can shoot bullets or rockets through it, destroying your boxes. However, the battery will remain safe behind the single door, so when constructing bunkers on your own footprint, you must take this into account. So I hope I made this simple enough for you to understand. It goes without saying that you obviously need to practice this technique in a build server, as every footprint will be slightly different. All the best. Cheers.